Hey YouTube, it's Jay. So today we're going to talk about the final piece of angle management, talking about managing angles of the cue ball and the rails. Um, now we are going to have another whole section on angle management that's going to be about angles into the leave zones. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't cover that. That's actually what a lot of people mean by angle management, but I see two sides of it. One is managing the angle of the cue going into the rail, and the other is seeing managing the angles of the cue ball into the leave zone. Uh, and we had to cover management of angles to the rails first because we're going to use that when we do angles into the leave zones. So this is the final part of angles into and out of the rails. Um, so when we're talking about the angle uh, going out of the rails, we did a video, I did a video, a couple videos back, about how the cue ball reacts when it has not made contact with an object ball. Now there's a concept that we have to be aware of uh, when we're talking about the angle coming out of the rail after contact with the object ball. So first of all, the angle coming out of the rail after contact with the object ball works exactly the same as the angle uh, going out of the rails when there is no object ball with that one exception. So we talked about half a tip is 15 degrees added to the tangent line um, or added, not added to the tangent line, but added to the angle, the, the natural angle of the shot. So if you come into the rail at a 45 degree angle with half a tip of English, you'll come out of the rail at about a 60 degree angle. Okay, um, now obviously, so when we're talking about contact with the object ball, the thing that we haven't talked about yet is something called contact induced spin. Um, and contact induced spin uh, is the when you make contact with an object ball, there is a natural amount of running English that gets added to the, to the cue ball. So here's how this works. If we have a cue ball and I strike it with my cue on that side of the ball, this is going to spin this way. Right? We know that. A lot of this spin comes because we shape our tip, we rough it, uh, and we stick chalk on it to give us a lot of friction between the cue and the object ball. So here's, here's the thing. We know that the farther out we hit it to the side, the more rotation we're going to get, the more rotational angle And we know that um, the faster we hit it, the more rotational speed we're going to get, right? We're also going to get more velocity. Okay, so the cue ball's going to move faster. All right. So the important things here are that the further out we hit, the more spin we get. And the, the faster we hit it, the faster it's going to spin. Now that's not going to change the angle that comes off the rail, it's just going to make it um, hold, its in, hold its spin for longer. Okay, so this does not mean more English, this means that it will spin for longer, which means it, it may be hits the first rail will spin at a slower pace and at a faster pace it'll hit the first rail and then the second rail. First rail and then the second rail. Um, so this is about how long how long it spins. Okay, so when we hit, everybody's got this? Yes? I'm going to erase it now. We're going to move to the second piece of this. Okay, and of course this is our contact point. Gotta, gotta point out the contact point. Now that was with the 
Q striking the cue ball. And so you had the, the cue was moving and the cue ball was not. Now what we've got is we've got a cue ball that's moving and we have an object ball. I'm just going to put a stripe on it uh, just to distinguish it. Um, now we've got a cue ball. It's moving at a certain speed, whatever speed we struck it. And it is going to make contact with this ball. Now, there are a lot of videos out there and there's some discussion on this topic, but it's generally, it's generally assumed that the maximum cut-induced spin that you can get comes from a half-ball hit. What is a half-ball hit? Well, a half-ball hit is when you have half of the object ball and half of the cue ball on your point of aim. But what that really is, is this contact point, which is 45 degrees. Okay, on a half ball hit, the contact point is 45 degrees to the shot. So your pocket's down here, you hit a half ball hit, and it goes, and, and you make the ball in the pocket. Ignoring cut induced throw, or ignoring throw. Assuming that this ball is dead. Okay, so here's what happens though. This ball is moving. This ball is stationary. These are phenolic, okay? Usually. Okay, there are some plastic ones out there, but, but the good balls are phenolic. And so, what else is phenolic? The tip on your brake cue may be phenolic or a hybrid. It might be like a Samsara where it's phenolic and leather hybrid. But this is a phenolic tip. It's made out of the same stuff as the balls are, which, by the way, is why I don't use this on mine, because this will scratch the balls, um, where a leather tip will not. Uh, so anyhow, so these are phenomenal. So if you look at this, um, on, a half, on a half ball hit, you have, remember we did our angles? You have an angle that is roughly, if we were to draw that up, one tip in width. So this is going to put in, this is going to add, and it's always running English, always running English. If the shot's to the left, the, the English is going to pick up uh, right-hand English, which is counterclockwise spin. So uh, it will always pick up running English, and it will always and, and at its maximum, it can do one tip, okay? That is the maximum spin you can get uh, from cut-induced spin. Now, you could say, well, but if I, hit it out, if I hit it out here on the side, you know, if I made contact really thin, that, well, it would hit further out. Well, that's true it would hit further out, but it would also have less mass that it's hitting. Um, and so it, it, it's not going to grab as much as it does on a half ball hit. Okay, so one tip is roughly the maximum you can get. Uh, if you have a straight in shot, you get zero tips. So for me, I use, uh, so, so the difference between this hit and hitting it with your cue is that friction from roughing the tip and putting chalk on it to make it grab and also uh, a leather tip has some give to it so you get a wider surface making contact. Okay? So you're not actually going to get the same English that you get with one tip of English. Even though you're hitting it at one tip to the side, you're not going to get the same spin, the same amount of spin as you get with your cue. I roughly consider it to be half which would be half a tip, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to average that because my range is from zero to one tip. So I'm going to average zero to a half a tip, I'm sorry, zero to half a tip, and I'm going to call it a quarter of a tip of English. Okay, so um, this is not exact. It's going to depend on uh, a lot of factors. If the balls are dirty, it's going to have more spin. If the balls are clean and, and polished like mine, it'll have this. Um, if it's humid, you may get some stickiness from the polish uh, that causes the, the balls to, to react a little differently. This is an art. 
Okay, and so really we're not going to get too deep into the into this. You actually don't need to know this. What you need to know is that a quarter of a tip is the effective maximum spin that you're going, or is the uh, running English that you're going to get from hitting uh, from a cue ball that hits with no other spin. So in other words, if we hit this shot when we shoot this on that vertical axis, we will gain about a quarter of a tip of spin. Okay, so that, that's that's the whole point of what I just said. Okay, so there are two ways that players deal with this. Okay, now the vast majority of people just when they think of the angle that the ball is going to come off, they just kind of incorporate that into their thinking. They've seen it so many times, they just incorporate it. And the vast majority of people do that. Some people, though, do something a little differently. And I want to expose you to that because had I known it back then, I probably would have gone down that path. Um, so we know that if I want to shoot a stop shot, we'll want to hit the ball a little bit low. So here's my cue ball. Here is the vertical axis. There's the horizontal axis. Center of the cue ball is where the two lines touch. So to, to stun the ball and have it have no English at the t no forward or bottom at the time that we hit the hit the cue to stun it, we know that we want to hit it about a quarter of a tip low. Okay, so we want to hit it about a quarter of a tip low. To on the way to the ball to have it when it makes contact actually follow the the tangent line. It makes the ball have no forward or backward momentum. The cue ball is sliding, and so it goes directly down the tangent line. We know that, um, as I said, if you, when you make contact and you get that cut and do spin, you get about a quarter of a tip of spin. So what we can do is, let's say I'm cutting, let's say that's my object ball. So I'm going to cut it into the corner pocket in that direction, right? Well, that means that when I hit it, it's going to make contact here. So you get the, the momentum makes contact there, which causes the cue ball to spin this way. Yes? If I want to counteract that spin, the question is, how do I make the cue ball spin the other way? Well, I hit it on the inside, right? And we just said that a quarter of a tip is what we're going to use as our reference, okay? Now, if we don't do anything, if we just stun that, we're going to pick up somewhere between five to 10 degrees of angle, okay? As I said, some players incorporate this into their thinking. That's what I do. That's what the majority of players do. However, some players instead will hit a quarter of a tip of inside English. And that quarter of a tip of inside English cancels this rotation. It's putting English exactly opposite what we're going to pick up from the spin. And so, uh, and this is really kind of an interesting concept. Um, this, is, this is kind of the cornerstone of C.J. Wiley's touch of inside method. Some people think it's about his stroke and he's adjusting because his stroke is a little different. And, he, uh, and they say, you know, well, he just knows that with his stroke, he tends to hit to the left, so he aims to hit to the right. Uh, that's not what it's about. It's about this. It's about canceling the spin, okay? Um, so the other way is to, rather than measuring our spin from the center of the ball, we measure it from a quarter down, a quarter over, which is a complete dead ball. We're, I'm going to call this the center of the, the spin center. How about that? 
This is true center. This is spin center. Just like the Earth has true north, which is the North Pole, uh, and then it has magnetic north, which is up in Greenland. And if you look at maps, they have this thing called the magnetic declination. And what that means is uh, if I point a compass and it says north, if I look at the map, it's going to tell me how much I have to adjust for that, the difference between the magnetic north and the true north. Okay, so uh, in terms of pull, what that means is that let's say that I want to put one tip of left-hand English. I want to hit it 15 degrees, or I want to put one tip of left-hand English. Well, if I'm somebody who measures from the center of the ball, and I hit one tip of left-hand English, that's 30 degrees, right? But we also get the contact-induced spin, so this is actually 40 degrees, is how it's going to come off the rail, okay? If instead, I use this point, the, the spin center, and I come one tip from there, now I actually come that true 30 degrees. Okay, it makes it a little easier to measure how you're going to come off the rail. Like I said, some players, myself included, we just know that that 10 degrees is there and we factor it into our, our angles when we're looking at it. Um, and you don't actually need technically to know this stuff. We're going to talk about how not to even have to think about this when we start talking about the shots. Um, but for those that want to know, there are two ways to, to deal with cut and do spin. One is to know that it exists and just incorporate it in your thinking. The other way is to actively counteract it by using a quarter of a tip of inside spin as your starting point for your English. Okay, so those are the two ways. Um, what you don't want to do is switch back and forth between the two methods. Either you want to hit true center or you want to hit spin center. Or, or I'm sorry, you want to base your tip position based on true center or spin center. Uh, one or the other, not back and forth between them. Because our routes, we're going to incorporate, we could go either way, routes first, then risk management. Uh, using the routes that we learned, or we can do risk management and then do the routes. Uh, I think that it makes more sense to do risk management first because we're going to be using the routes as part of our risk management strategy. So um, I would certainly encourage you trying this. If you're an experienced player and you, you aren't having trouble with your angles off the rails, don't change it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, so let's go take a look at this on the table. So I'm shooting a stun shot here, and I'm going to let the cue ball just run down to the end of the table. Now, because the angle that I'm cutting is to the right, my spin is going to be to the left. So when I hit this, it's going to be as if I had put left-hand English on it. And what we'll see is that it will come down here, and it will spin, and it will be about a 10-degree angle that it comes off of there, and that will play in a little, little bit later. So nice little stun shot. I'm going to shoot it kind of soft so you can see the spin. See how it added just a little bit of angle to that? Now again, if I hit it harder, I do pick up a little bit more spin. Um, and that's because it's going to spin. Or it's not more spin, it spins faster. So again, let's put it where it's right. Let's put it right in the center of the table. And let's shoot it with just a nice little stun shot. No side spin at all. And you can see it's spinning at a slight angle. That the straight angle would have been to come down here. It came off at about a 10 degree angle off of the rail. Yep, this is again just a stun shot. Cutting the one in the center of the pocket. I'm going to hit it a little harder than I did last time so that you can see it comes straight down and straight up. It actually should hit about here, a little off center, because I would have to put this so that the edge was on the, on the point, not the ball, to get it to go straight down that line. So let's, let's watch this. See how it came back this way? 
that was from the cut and do spin. Um, now on a on a big angle, you can see that a lot more clearer. I'm just going to roll this ball in. Okay. Big angle, I'm just going to roll this in, watch the cue ball pick up the left hand spin. See how it came out? And it's not following the tangent line, it came a little bit wider here than it would have. Okay, so, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put just, I'm, I'm trying to set this up so that it's a pretty good half ball hit. So when I'm looking at this, I'm aiming directly at the edge of the ball. Um, now I don't use center to edge, but that's what I'm doing here to show you the half ball hit. So I don't use center to edge um, aiming systems. I don't use aiming systems. Um, but this is, so this is about a 45 degree angle. Here's the, here's the line, that's about 45 degrees off of that angle. So this, this should give us the maximum cut and do spin. I'm going to hit it just a little, little bit low and a little bit right. And you can see that the cue ball came off at the exact angle that it had. It came, came in at this angle and it came out at the same angle. So you see that? Because I hit it soft, it, uh, it did have some rolling that, that took it forward, but the angle that it came into the rail was the same as the angle it came out of the rail. Make that a little harder and see, see if we can show that just a little bit better. We're not, we're not adding anything. That's it for today. I mean, this isn't, this isn't a big concept in terms of how, explaining it, but it is something you have to internalize and you have to choose between am I going to cancel that English or am I going to uh, just know that it's going to happen. That's it. That, that ends this concept. Um, and we'll be making use of this further down the road. Again, with that, like, subscribe, ding the notification bell, and we'll see you next time.